Hey gang, we're back for another episode of what we're calling Raptor Raps. Now we have a sponsor. So we are going to welcome Stellar Cyber aboard with the Raptors family for our Raptor Rap podcast. We're going to be telling you more about Stellar Cyber as we go on into the future, but we want to welcome them to the Raptors family. And while we're at it, let's talk to one of our Raptors right now. We want to welcome in uh, pitcher Damian Henderson. Hi, Damian. How are you? Doing great. How is everybody else? Okay, so... Let's talk briefly about um, you. You spent time with the Raptors last season in '22. Yes, sir. Um, mainly in a workout capacity. Were you ever under contract at all? I was under contract for I think around five-ish days. I came in, prepared to pitch, came out for an inning. Uh, didn't go, didn't go so well. Yeah. And, uh, well, you, you were know, dealing with some issues too. I right? was. Yeah, I uh, didn't prepare. I got released by the Reds shortly before I. Um, I uh, came to the Raptors and, uh, yeah, basically had an injury and just kind of worked through that. And you guys kept me around and kept me working with the team. And it was a very enjoyable experience. Well, the one thing I noticed clearly is I kept telling Cash, why can't we get this guy into contract? Because if we go to the – to the um, Home run derby? The home, yeah, what do we call yeah, it, Trevor? Yeah. What do we call the home run? <laughs> the knockout round. The knockout, knockout round. Because I've watched you also hit batting <laughs> practice and you'd hit balls over the, the roof line of the building in right field. It's, you know, what? And so – we're hoping to count on you for some of that this year because we were 0-6 in knockout rounds last year. Hey, I mean, that's uh, – I'm – oh, trust me. When we were losing them bags, it was yeah. it was hard over there on that sideline. I just wanted to get in there so bad. And games <laughs> too, but – oh, well, yeah. For those of you at home who don't know about the knockout rounds here in the Pioneer League, the save on pitching – because uh, we have limited rosters of only 25 players, we don't have extra inning affairs because you can't afford the pitching. Imagine going 17 innings on game one of a six-game homestand. You won't survive. So we have what's called a knockout round. After nine innings, if the game is tied, we uh, their team starts first. They get two minutes to hit as many balls out of the park as they can, giving them five outs, and then we get our turn, and whoever uh, – Whoever comes out ahead, that's the winner of the ball game. And we were 0-6 last year. That's not this year. Yeah. They're, we're gonna be, they're gonna want to win it before nine. That's they're right. They're gonna lose it after. Okay, so tell me, you're you're a pitcher. Give, give us your playing background. Where did you grow up? Where did, did you, if you played collegiately, blah, 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 up yeah, yeah. until up until now. Sure, sure. Um, so uh, I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. A kind of transplant from Goldsboro. If anybody's ever heard that before. Um, kind of grew up, my family was a tobacco family, kind of raised that type of stuff. My mom married a city boy, so we moved out to Raleigh, out in downtown. Raleigh. And, uh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's, <laughs> and that way, boy, doesn't look as Raleigh as the big city. <laughs> it was a big city. I mean, yeah, I bet. back in the day in Goldsboro when I was growing up, it was a little small. It's, it's, <laughs> but anyway, so after that, um, I played some high school ball, um, threw the ball pretty hard. Um, just kind of done that my entire life, basically. Um, and then, uh, yeah, after uh, doing high school ball, um, I went to Salt Lake Community College for a year here in Utah, actually. I was supposed to go play for BYU. Um, I had an injury in high school. I was going to go play for BYU. had an injury in high school. They said to go to Salt Lake Community College to, you know, see if you can still do it, obviously, you know, to protect your program and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I went to Salt Lake. Um, actually, didn't tell them I was a pitcher. <laughs> I told them I was an outfielder hitter and uh, just went with it. Hit really well, um, hit a couple home runs, bat, had a high batting average. Cal State Bakersfield, actually in California, saw me at a, at a game. I hit probably one of the furthest balls I've hit in college, and they were there. So they offered me a, a, a contract, well, I guess a contract. They offered me a scholarship there in college, and I played there for two years. Um, COVID happened. Um, I was supposed to be as an outfielder. That didn't happen. Tried to find my way in the ball. The Reds gave me an opportunity as a pitcher and an outfielder. I showed up first day, practiced with the outfielders, took BP, Saw the monstrous tanks, saw I could hit, but I came in and I threw fuel from the left side. And <laughs> the next day, they called me into the front office. And, you know, as a player, you get called in the front office, that's not good. You know, yeah, usually, absolutely, usually. Yeah, absolutely, Especially since I was in spring training. You know, if you're in low A or high A, you get called in front office. Maybe they're bringing you up or they're bringing you down. There was no up from this one. It was either down or whatever. I didn't know what was going to happen. They were like, hey you're a really great hitter. You know, you're, you're pretty average as far as, you know, your skills. You'll have to be, you have to shine a lot and be pretty good as an outfielder, but as a pitcher, you can make it very quickly. So Because of the fuel. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. They were like, Trevor, you make a note for a t-shirt, tanks and fuel. Yeah. I like <laughs> tanks it. Tanks and fuel, there you go. Courtesy of DA. <laughs> 
and yeah so yeah and they they said we would like you to take this route and you know as an as a player i, I really wanted to hit and that's kind of like my love is outfitter pitching but i knew i was really good at i mean sorry i'm one of my loves is hitting and out playing outfield but um, I could learn the game of pitching because I had an ability to throw the ball. Really and that's hard. what you spent last summer with us, uh, working on your pitching mechanics with, with not only Les but with uh, Evan as well. Oh so yeah. How helpful have they been? Oh, they've been amazing. Um, I've been working with Evan, especially this whole offseason. He has his own um, training facility here in Ogden, which is actually really cool. Um, it's an indoor place, and I've been training there with me and Chase. Um, Chase and I. Yeah, Come on, Ch get it right. Chase and I. Sorry. Well, I grew up in the country, remember? So. And, and Pablo, right? <laughs> Pablo Aravalo. Yeah, Pablo. Yeah, yeah, Pablo was there before he went out to the Diamondbacks um, with a bunch of our guys. Yeah. Then it's such a great opportunity. Cash said they all did well. You know, I mean, we got we have a stacked team this year. Um, but yeah, working on mechanics, not as much as throwing hard. Um, I can do that already. Um, I just need to be able to throw the ball in the zone more often. So in other words, folks, what he's talking about in translation is he's he already knows he's a thrower. Now he's he's adjusting to learn how to be a pitcher, and there's a major difference. Oh, there's a huge difference. Yeah, you just get up there and rip it. You're a th you're a thrower. Yeah. As a pitcher, you have like a little bit of. It's almost kind of like playing chess. Some guys can do it innately. They're just that's just something they've trained, and they can get up there and play chess. Me, I just get up there and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna throw this ball as hard as I can. That was my previous forethought. Now I'm moving on to a more you know excelled way of thinking as a pitcher. You know, I'm going to pitch the ball past this guy. So. Well, you're a pretty uh, a pretty big fellow. I mean, uh, how tall are you? Yeah, six one, around there. So six one, and and last year you were probably what two forty? Uh, two fifty five actually. And now what are you? Now I'm two twenty five. You can t I can tell. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I I want I want ability to be the best player I can be this year, and yeah. being two fifty five was great on the mound, but you know as far as other aspects of the game that I want to be able to play, um, I need to be a lot lighter, be able to so handle the season. What do you? Uh, uh, attribute to the uh, success of, of the weight loss? Um, changing the eating for sure. That was a really, really big deal. I, I Let me give you my usual breakfast. I would usually eat like three or four pancakes and then like usually like 15 pieces of bacon with- Oh my God. Oh, it was a lot, it was a lot of food. Tons of, had a protein shake. I mean, here's the thing. It wasn't really, really bad food. It was just a lot of food, and I was eating a lot more than what my body was, um, you know, burning. So I decided to decrease the amount of food I was eating and increase the quality even further. And also, I worked a job with Amazon for a little while over the off season that I ran like eight or nine miles a day. That also helps, <laughs> too. But yeah. Okay, so you spent the winter here in Ogden um, working on mechanics with Evan, who's Evan Parker, who's now our full-time pitching coach. Who's Les has moved on to be the skipper of the Rocky Mountain Vibe, so that'll be a fun series whenever we play them. Um, but what have you spent working on uh, mechanically? What is, what is the main focus that Evan has you working on? So I guess throughout my entire life of pitching, which has been around two and a half years, kind of, um, people haven't really given me much instruction. When you got a guy that throws really, really hard, I found they don't want to touch you. They don't want to mess you up as they say right and so there isn't really a ton of instruction it's more mental okay just focus on a little spot and throw there and I did that for two years and got released like it was not enough for me to be able to just focus mentally I needed to be able to understand mechanically where I'm failing on not being able to throw the ball in this place that I want I don't really need to change what I do well I just need to increase my ability to understand where my body is and then adapt to why well, adapt in a mechanical form, being able to throw more strikes. This is kind of so. As you can tell, just from listening to Damian right now, folks, um, baseball, especially the art of pitching, is a lot more complicated than just picking up a ball, looking at the catcher, getting a sign, and throwing. Everything has to be in sync. Of course, analytics does play a part of that. It's true. I'm. I'm. I understand analytics. I'm not a big fan of it, <laughs> but I, I understand where it plays a part. And, it, and if it plays a part in success, then win-win all the way around. Right, right. So um, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to you about a little bit about your personal life, your family, and everything else. Perfect. So Sounds good We'll to be me. right back after these, uh, these messages and uh, also our podcast presented by Stellar Cyber. Damian Henderson here, left-handed pitcher of the Ogden Raptors. we got a new hat logo this year. That's going to be part of our BP logo um as you can tell it's got a new little area right here right where the talent is as you can see that our uh, augie had a little bit of lunch this year we put it on a hat finally anyway you can have it on the ogdenraptors.com or at the ballpark if you choose to not want it online 
Well, have a great rest of your day. So we're back, and again, our podcast, Wrap the Raft, sponsored by Stellar Cyber. Hope you enjoyed looking at that new drop of that uh, that Raptors cap is, as the, the players say, it's sick. Oh, yeah. So, okay, we're back with our guest, uh, Raptors pitcher, outfielder, tank hitter, all of the above, Damian Henderson. <laughs> so, Dame, um, we got a little bit of background. You grew up in, in um, uh, North Carolina. Yes, sir. And we, now we know how you ended up in Utah because you ended up pitching or playing at Slick. Yes, sir. And then you went on from there. But now, um, uh, how old are you? I'm 25. You think we'd know that, seeing that he's under contract, yeah. right, Chuck? <laughs> but oh, no. 25 years old, a um, uh, little bit personal. You're, 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 a, you're married, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely a married man. That's for sure. I'm locked down. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Sorry, <laughs> viewers. He's taken. So uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about your wife. Oh, her name's uh, Mia Cullimore. Uh, she grew up in Kaysville. Uh, let's see, what else do I know? Okay, so where'd you meet? Videos? Oh, so we actually went to the same junior college, and she was a softball player there. Oh man, man, she should be the professional like athlete. So I, I met her there. I'll, 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 I'll skip forward a little bit. When we were dating and we were in college, I was at Cal State Bakersfield, and she was still at Salt Lake Community College. And I'd call her and be like, "Hey, honey, I went like five for 15 like with a jack. I think I, was, I had a great weekend. I was like, how'd your weekend go? She goes, oh, they intentionally walked me five times and I hit like five tanks, you know? Mm -hmm. So I basically batted like 800. Well, I tell you what, last year, you know, we had a couple of girls baseball games. Oh, I heard about that. Actually. So we're trying to put another one together for this year. And yeah. so she's, she's got to come because oh. if you hit tanks, I'm sure she will. Well, funny story. Uh, I asked her if she wanted to go hit BP on our first date. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's hey, a great first day. Hey, that's what I wanted to do. I was like, if she's a softball player and baseball is all about my life, this is what I want to do. We we hit, we didn't go on our first date. We went and sledding on our first date, but we did hit BP eventually, and she's got some juice. That's so, cool. and no children so far? No, sir, not yet. It's all kind of up to her. She's younger than me. She's 22. So Where where are you living now? We're currently living in Riverdale. Actually. Okay. Yeah, we moved from um, from Kaysville. We were living with her family for a little while, you know, trying to give up some funds so we can, you know, early early couple, married couple thing, you know, and uh, yeah. And so, so uh, how does a country bumpkin from North Carolina? What are they? What's your impressions about Utah? Um, it's very different. That's for sure. I don't get me wrong. Beautiful state, and I love the people here. But some things are very different. Um, like I'll hold the door for somebody, and they'll just walk right past me. They won't say thank you. <laughs> I look at uh, them like this. That's that's not. I don't think that's a, a I don't Utah know. thing. I just think that's a societal thing Maybe, right now. But what the one thing that drives me nuts about Utahns mm. is they don't when you when there's not a green arrow but a green light they and they got to <laughs> turn left they won't get out into the intersection they wait at the crosswalk so by the time they turn only one car gets through Unreal. that drives me bananas definitely definitely some of the driving skills need to improve around <laughs> this year I figure with harder terrain there'd be better drivers but sometimes that isn't really the case I guess huh so briefly before we uh, we wrap up I want you to talk about uh, what you're expecting uh, from not only yourself this year with the Raptors but also uh, your teammates and what kind of makeup you think we have absolutely which one do you want to start with you want me to start with just me okay you got the floor baby um I'll, I'll start with the team expectation you know that i have for our team i mean we haven't we had an amazing team last year um especially saw for the first half just destroyed everyone the second half we didn't really push through um you know i'm looking for as far as our team we already have the makeup to do it we just got to do it and be able to be mentally tough be able to understand when things go down to not allow that to you know drag out the rest of our season and, uh, you know, the rest of the teams don't know what, don't know that we're coming. You right. know, I've heard about the other teams and no disrespect to them. I haven't seen much change from them, but I've seen a whole lot of good add to our team, especially this coming up year. And, um, well, you got to credit cash for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Manager, best manager I've played for so far. Amazing man. Um, great recruiter. Um, knows what he's talking about. You know, I've, I have a lot of people, um, you know, when I played for, didn't really teach me very much. Um, that's just because of uh, the nature of how I play. Cash does has zero. Well, the one whatsoever. thing I always that Cash <laughs> always emphasizes too is that, you know, we may not have an affiliate like we had for almost 20 years with the Dodgers, but literally every night you're auditioning for 30 major league clubs. Yep. And he even works for one. He does. So yeah. he's you're under the microscope 24/7, not just on the field but off. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's very important. Off field stuff is very important. You know, taking care of your body, making sure you're eating right, getting your workouts in. All that stuff, and that's kind of what I've been preparing myself for this upcoming season. You know, yeah. making my body to the top, tip-top condition that it can be in, and then you know, expecting 
the greatest performance I can on the mound in the outfield or whatever Cash deems me to be as an outfielder or player, whatever he needs, I'm going to be there and be my best self. So, Well, whenever he needs is the best thing you said in this whole, this whole interview because um, that's what this type of league is about. I mean, it's about players being versatile and being able to play more than one position. Absolutely. And not only that for our league because we're limited on roster size, but the, the MLB clubs are looking for that kind of, you know, versity or versatility with uh, – with, with players. players i mean you got uh, one th- i mean chris taylor might come back and play short now yeah uh, cause, unreal because gavin lux got hurt yeah um poor guy you might have a catcher play third a catcher play for whatever it takes um because they have lim- they've had limited rosters forever yeah um so maybe one thing analytics has helped is is getting more than a, a one tool player right so um i agree the only thing i can give you a little bit piece of advice is yes sir is um uh, it, it's been a while for you, mm-hmm. uh, especially with pitching. Um, be a good listener. Don't expect too much too fast because mm-hmm. you'll get frustrated. Yeah, right. I mean, every every pitcher, every player you, you've you experienced, you go through hot weeks oh, yeah. and you go through slow weeks. Hard game, hard game. So when it's been a while, uh, it's going to take a while. Mm-hmm. So just uh, be patient and, and let, it, let the game come to you is the only advice I could give you. But. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, we've been with Damon Henderson before a Raptors player, and our Raptor Raps is brought to you by Stellar Cyber. One more question, Dame. Sure. Before you leave, fire away. I'm gonna have you look at your camera. Yeah. Okay. I I end every interview with this question. Okay. If you had to have lunch or dinner with any human being in history, who would that be? Living or dead, it doesn't matter who. I had to be my wife, personally. But if why? Because uh, she's the most amazing woman I've ever met in my life, and she's changed my life so far. It's only been a little over two years, and so, I mean, I, I personally think she's the only person in my life that you know changes everything I've ever done, and that's what I need is wow. an amazing woman like her. So, so Mia's her name. Mia's her name. Yes, Mia. Sir. So I'm gonna look right at the camera and say, Mia, take this man to lunch, because. <laughs> Dozens of people have seen this podcast. (laughs) So anyway, on behalf of Stellar Cyber and the Raptors front office and myself and Damian Henderson, anything you want to close with? Um, Excited to have an amazing year. Come out of the ballparks. You want to see a bunch of home runs and strikeouts and a bunch of wins. All right. You heard it, folks. Season kicks off May 23rd. Tickets are going to go on sale pretty soon, right, Trev? Yep. And uh, we're ready to go, baby. So until we see you next time, ciao, baby.